Hello, we're back on the bank, and I'm going to start the video with a bit of a rant, so stay tuned for obviously whatever else happens, obviously, between now and then, sort of thing. So, what's my rant? Right, okay, so um, DNA baits, yeah, you let me down, you let me down massive, yeah, 11 quid on something, and it just went kaboom, right? So, what was it? It was a DNA amino smoke, yeah, the SLK version, because that's normally what I use in between that as well as sticky baits. And uh, 11 quid, and uh, I didn't get to use any of it. Yeah, well, I have, but not the way I wanted to. So I thought, yeah, okay. So obviously, what I'll do, I'll, I'll get all the up baits and everything sorted, obviously, on the rods and stuff. I like to do it, obviously, when I get to the bank. Normally, use the same rigs as what I used before, like, but fresh baits, obviously. And um, I thought I'd put a dabble of this on. So I got it out of the bag and that, and that. It's all only worth my bait and stuff. And I'm not kidding you, all I did was that, just the tiniest little turn, not unscrewed it all the way, like that, yeah, just the tiniest little screw, and it, it came out like a ticking time bomb, and it just sprayed absolutely everywhere, it's like, what the heck, so I screwed it back on quickly, I'm like, what the heck can I do it? Now, bear in mind, it didn't get shook up or anything like that, um, it's not exactly hot, so I can't see it, that being it. Have I got a dodgy one? I don't know. Yeah, but it literally just sprayed everywhere. I have got no idea what, obviously what happened. So, I ain't got none on my hook baits whatsoever. Yeah, apart from a bit of foam. Yeah, looks like shaving foam. And then uh, the rest of it, because obviously it just kept going, even though I screwed it back on, it was still coming out. I just literally took, chucked it onto my pellets, what I didn't really want to do. Yeah, so that is empty, yeah, completely empty. So, one shot go. Yeah, so but to be honest with you, it's not that potent either. Yeah, it's I was expecting it to be much stronger smelling than that. I mean, the, the boilers on their own smell more than what that does, so there's not, not really a lot to it. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So, that's my rant over. Yeah, don't buy that because it's absolutely pants. Yeah. So just think, obviously, if it goes in your bag, your, your bag's going to not exactly stink, but it's obviously not going to be nice, is it? So, uh, have a bit of a smell like. So, yeah, pants. 11 quid down the pan. Yeah. So, anyway. So, yeah, we're in woods. Yeah. I'm back on woods. And uh, I thought I'd uh, take a bit of a uh, dare on this one, so I booked a bit of holiday, a uh, half day sort of thing, so just a chance to get a spot, because it does get a little bit round out on this place, you pay your ticket, you come in, and you can't get on, you end up uh, doing what I did last time, go in and get a bloody refund if you haven't got a peg, yeah, because it's a stupid system, you can't just go through the gate and obviously do what you need to do and then pay your ticket, no, and you've got to literally pay your ticket, and obviously ask where it's like, yeah, loads of room, you know, the same old bull crap sort of thing, you go to it and it's like, in one peg, yeah. Where's the loads of room? But that's another rant over anyway. So we're on, yeah. We got here. So half day. So finished at twelve, and then uh, come and set up. Uh, I'm not exactly in one of my favourite pegs. I'm in in between sort of thing. So it's a little bit tighter on this one. So literally, this bivy takes out the whole entire bloody peg. So casting is great fun because you you think that you're going to set the bivy with it, like. Uh, trees are overhanging a little bit as well, so you've got to be wary of them. So you've only got like a one cast line unless you're under arming and that sort of thing. So I am actually fishing close in again. And uh, one to the right, one to the left, and then uh, one just lazy lob out into the uh, open sort of thing. So that's all I've done. I'll all on um, sticky baits drill. So I've got a co combi rig on one, which is... Uh, got a krill um, white pop up on it that's all balanced off with tungsten don't really like to use tungsten so much now because of the crayfish mine because it, it's tungsten it really attracts it attracts it to it so i don't know why but it does it sounds like someone's got a fish on or something that sounds like a tail flap and um on the other one it's a um, snowman so a white tipper and then just a single boilie on the uh, left hand rod. So, and to be fair, even though I'm fishing close in, I've had some liners. Now, 
the liners, I'm thinking maybe Pike, because Pike do come very close in here, and it's been all three rods. It's not just been like the one, it's been one, two, three, and then it goes three, two, one, back. And that's after all the lines and that lot are settled, so it's not a matter of case where it's lines moving around, obviously with the wind and stuff, it's literally a liner going right through. Or maybe a, a bit of debris, like a weed or something, but I'd say liner, because I've seen the anger go up, and then it come back down, and then it went back up and it stayed there, and it, it's literally still there, like, so I'm not pulling them until they scream. So that, that's what's happened up to now since I've been here, it's uh, about half past two sort of thing. So I finished at 12 straight here, it's only like 20 minutes down the road. Really, really slow setup. Uh, get this thing up first, that's what I wanted to do. And then I've obviously got room to play about because I can't get behind. I can't get behind my baby because it took out the full bloody size. That's the only thing with it. But I didn't want the compact because it, it is a little bit warm. It's not hot, but it's, it's warmer. And when you're in them compact buddies, He's sweating like a pedo in a sweet shop. So, yeah, I didn't want that. But the other thing what I wanted to uh, come across, uh, right at the start of the video really, is uh, basically subscribers and uh, view viewers and all that sort of thing. Because I don't really tend to get many comments these days. Yeah, and um, I don't know if people are still watching, so if that is the case, there's no point in me doing these videos. Yeah, I might have just looked through enjoy what I'm doing, what I'm actually here to do, and then not the videos I'm off like, completely stop doing them. I know I've said it a few times in the past and stuff, and obviously I'm like, yeah, I've come back and all that one. But obviously I was going through bad times, yeah, stuff was happening, yeah. At work, at home, obviously, people messing me about and stuff. So, basically getting used, yeah, not so much abused, but used. And, uh, yeah. Obviously puts downers on things, doesn't it? But I'm thinking, obviously, if people aren't watching these videos and not enjoying them and all that sort of thing, because I'm average 250 people a year subscribers, which is nothing, yeah? So that number needs to grow to keep the channel alive anyway. And uh, also the views need to go up to uh, obviously keep it worth doing it, yeah? Otherwise it's not, is it? Yeah, it's like how else, why, why talk to a camera and then no one actually watch it, yeah, I could throw more stuff in there and that, like, I've done all this, I've done all that, but bear in mind, I don't really get soddled from it, yeah, so it's not like, I can, whatever I gain from it, I can actually throw back into it, because I don't get, fuck all, yeah, don't even, don't even pay for a single day ticket, yeah, it really done. Yeah, so it's not like I can go buying this, buying that, do a review on this, do a, unless I'm buying it for myself and I'll do a review that way, then yeah, fair enough, like, but otherwise, I can't, can I, yeah, I'll be up shit's creek wind debt sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so I've got the mesh panel down because this place itself, it does get really rammed out with mozzies. And they're on, on the thing already, I ain't got it zipped down on one side, but I've got the main part of it down. And I can see them on the outside ready to come in. I've got the mozzies up over. I've got another one in my other bag as well, so I'm going to be using two. Might get a beep in a minute because the coot's going across. Even though the lines are in the water, the rod tips are in the water, it's really close to it, so it have, might have a chance of knocking it. I don't know what to do. Where it's doing, I think it's trying to shag one now. Oh, it's feathers up and that lot, and then another one over there, but it doesn't even look like it's got a lay out on it. So, yeah, that's obviously what. What we're doing up to now, so completely stop smoking, doing good on the vape. Yeah, I need to change the flavour on it because it's getting a bit coily. And that is it up to now. So I'll try and get some content in there later for you. Um, it's overcast, looks good for it, but there's wind. Yeah, there's, it's, it's not a heavy wind, but it's, it's put a right ripple on the water. And I've noticed this place fishes better when they're in no ripple. But it might calm down. Yeah. It's meant to be knocking the wind temperature, um, wind speed down to about eight mile an hour, so it will, it will be virtually flat calm later, which is obviously what we need. Well, that's all I'm doing now. It's just literally putting some of these pellets in. Uh, basically, I've got a bu bu bucket of water down here, so I've got to handball them into the spawn light because I've got a spoon. Yeah. Well, not only that, I want to keep it a little bit tighter, so instead of it, just a nice spray sort of thing. 
I'm going to keep it a little bit tighter in the area so the sponge sobs are just going to pretty much knock them straight down sort of thing. So it just looks very underarm, not clipped up or anything like that, just looks like it in. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, it's just that I don't, I don't want like a bit there, a bit there, a bit there. I want to have like a ball of them sort of thing, so a little bit like PVA bags sort of thing. And yeah, it just looks like underarm and it so let's go. Yeah, it's only a bit of underarm spawning. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, nothing, nothing dramatic. A bit of underarm spawning. Just use them pellets up. They've been sat in my shed for donkeys, so I want to get them gone anyway. And uh, more than likely, attract all the snot in green. Nah. Two of them. Nah. I'll let it go a different way. Go on. Let's see. Chops are good. So the bream are coming from the left hand rod, single boy. They uh, obviously where I put all them pellets. We've got spawn. Mm. Also the smart liquid as well. Is it smart liquid? Something like that. Me no liquid. Me no smoke, whatever it's called. That stuff. So don't buy it because it attracts bream. Mm. It's like a bomb and it attracts bream. Yeah, two bad things. Yeah, as a carpet, you don't want either of them, do you? A bomb's quite fun, right? But obviously not that type of bomb. Yeah. So, yeah, two bream. Uh, left hand rod's going off like bloody crazy and it is literally just them things. So... Yeah, I mean, pellets, obviously, for bream ain't clever anyway, is it? But, to be fair, every time I come down this end, I've always had a few anyway, so all going well, some carp actually come along as well, like, so feed the little ones, get the big ones involved as well, the noise, um, sounds and all that lot, simulates, obviously, the uh, bigger fish come in, start feeding as well, and then the smaller fish bugger off, and obviously the bigger ones start having it, so, that's the plan, yeah, all going well, it happens. Uh, loads of ducks down here as well, loads of birds. Yeah. Uh, swans have got babbies, yeah. Uh, three or four babbies, they, they've been hitting the rods as well, so come out with the neck and all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, try and get them gone, that. And babies are just that's, that's looking at me like that, sort of thing, like, what the fuck are you doing? Mummy and Daddy don't like it, I was with a big net in my hand, it's like, yeah, you will get away. Anyway, they bugger off somewhere until later, and then, uh, I'm either going to get beats by bream, carp, or maybe the bats. Because I had no um, line bites from bats for a long time. So more than likely, it's going to be up all night from bats <laughs> and bream. Oh! Yeah, it's all fun and games, isn't it? So, bailiffs come round, uh, ask me, asking me about a ridge monkey vault. Yeah, obviously the big ones. He's like, how much are these worth? It's like... Why are you asking me? <laughs> I think you would try to sell it to me, really. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know where he said he got it. He, like, went in there and out there, sort of thing. Like, uh, obviously, try to get rid. Or he's found it, either way. Oh, uh, yeah. So, that's been the update up to now. I've had uh, two bream out. A um, few more, like, coming on, lifting to rod, and then obviously just bumping off, which is, saves me a lot of hassle. Yeah, just literally net them like that, and if I can get them in the water how I did, obviously I'm the last one, then I will do, so picking the things up and then getting covered in it. But the thing is with bream, what I've always noticed, 
and same same back in the days obviously when I used to fish for them as soon as you get that bream snot on the line you catch them and catch them and you can't stop so yeah but the second one um, I literally just put the rod in just literally got it on the pod hanger on come back to the bed literally got sat back down on his arm and then literally the rod will go in again it's like, oh god but that's my own stupid fault for the pellets but I need to use them anyways Oh, yeah, that's why they're going in. And the rod tip's going again, so I might get a beep in on that. So, right, let's go and investigate. Right, so all the ranting is done, and uh, I thought I'd give you some positives. So, one, it's not a blank. Yeah, it's so positive there. Yeah. But, I like to find your deals, don't I? Now, we all know what these are, don't we? Yeah, the wolf spot rocket whatever you want to call it right so you want to get yourself these yeah the normal size uh right rod Ooh. anyway yeah it's not gone yet yeah not one of these twitches where i go out and look at it every time yeah look at the angle look at the rod tip and now if it screams it screams yeah if it bounces i don't know where it is it can stay for a little bit anyway yeah let's jump back to it so what are these in the shops? 20 quidish. Alright, so if you want to get them about half price, yeah, or less than half price, about 8.99 they are, 8.74 Timu. Yeah, type in bait rocket and you'll find these. This is, opens up the same, so you can have the two, the three, or the four. Mm, snaps back. And it's on the magnets again, as you can well tell. Yeah. And it Probably works better than the uh, wolf one actually, because I've used the wolf one and um, didn't like to open half the time. Now, underarm chucks, obviously, where I was doing it over there, yes, it won't open. It needs that impact, so you've got to be able to cast it out, and then obviously it slaps the water and then it opens, and it opens up a dream. Yeah, it's, it normally opens up in the fall. Yeah, so it's easy to retrieve as well. So they are strong magnets. Yeah, but did it. Left rod. Line that's going through more than likely, or green. Yeah, so the magnets are strong, but they don't seem as powerful as what the wolf one is. But that's the issue what I was having with the wolf one. The magnets were too strong and it was not opening. Yeah, these ones are a lot more subtle. Yeah, so they don't take no to open. You've got the plunger in the middle, so to close it, you just pull that down, and then obviously you've got your full bomb. But you can load them obviously different ways, can't you? So ones, twos, however you want to load it. Right, so that's one positive there for you. Also, a, a nice cheapy for you. It's the same connector on the back and everything. There's literally no difference to it apart from it's just red all the way around or orangey sort of colour, whatever you want to call it. Second, Wolf. Yeah, it's not quite the same colour. It's not rechargeable. It is a plug and play go. So, if you've got your power banks and that lot, if you don't want to get eaten alive, you've got your little langy dangle thing so you can swing it around like a little lantern if you want to. But, like I say, you've got to have it plugged in. To get your cable, push that in USB C, and that illuminates up, and that's gonna kill the little fuckers, isn't it? And they do work. I've got one above, or actually, now I've got this one, but as you can tell, it's on charge and it's much bigger, so yes, but the insides is virtually the same. That's just got a light on it as well, so it comes on like that, so it's, it's more like designed for bedroom, that one. but this is just literally a mozzie zapper only. only. So, there we are. It's nice, light. don't even know I've got it in my hands, to be honest with you, apart from literally just the bulk of it. Weight-wise, there's literally nothing to it at all, to be fair. It's about the same as that, yeah? Right, before you think, I can't really hear him. Yeah, I can't hear you talking. I'm being quiet on purpose, because obviously I'm fishing close in. And if I go shouting my big fat mouth off, I ain't going to catch fuck all, am I? Yeah, so just turn your volume up. And then jobs are good, isn't it? Alright, so on the uh, rig side, so we'll be doing a uh, rig change at some point. Not during the night. Yeah, I might have a bait change during the night, but not a rig change. Yeah, so this is uh, what I'm going to, or going to go to. Now, I use the heli safe lock, so I've always had more faith in dropping the lead. Even though it's clear, 
Yeah, I mean a Bream car dropped the legs, obviously the Bream man got the pressure to do it like, well same with a really small car, but it can't drop it because obviously there's no way to actually pull the heli off, the, the lead off the heli system. So, the issue with the heli safes, if you go into like a really sandy place or gritty sort of place, even if it's silt, what's obviously got grit in there, um, you'll notice that your heli safes can actually jam open, so you go to do a cast and then your leg comes off. Yeah, and that's only because it's full of like sand and grit and all that sort of stuff really, just debris. You can clean them out and things, but it's obviously sometimes a little bit too faff. So, uh, for this location, uh, this is basically what I'm changing to. So the rig itself, it's virtually the same. Yeah, so that's obviously my hot link. I always set these tungsten uh, stoppers always in the exact same place. Yeah, there's no difference. The, the boom itself, it's the same length. The stoppers are the same like um the tungsten um clingers whatever you call it. i can't remember what you call them yeah because obviously i don't buy the actual like branded ones i buy the cheaper version and the work and you can reuse these just by literally yeah uh, re-splicing them back on again with a, a really fine splicing needle so you're right i don't even bother with any type of putty and the reason why is because of the uh, crayfish and that lot and not only that putty it all gets sticky and that lot and it all knackers all your gear up obviously when you do put things away so the actual hook itself it's uh always set them up on like a claw sort of finish as you can see and all that is it's basically um like a slip d yeah and uh that's just tied on to ronnie style yeah so i'm not going to show you how to do that i've done it on numerous videos so if you do want to see it jump back a few videos and you'll see it uh leg core yeah because it's allowed in here and uh, what I want to do, even though these are, are pretty straight, I'm going to put the lead on and then it, I'm actually going to hang them up and that will give it tension and also straighten out the rig as well. But instead of the heli safe, I've gone to these Fox ones. Yeah, now what you do with these Fox ones, they're a drop off system. There's a couple of different types, but these you use the actual PVA pegs. So what you do, you get your, your lead with your swivel lead of your choice as long as it's got a swivel on it you poke that up there until the swivel meets at high now you can actually put the stoppers in there so if you don't want to use the PVA one so if you just want a solid system then you can just go straight to that but then you don't really need any of this you just literally go straight to the lead itself well as you can see that is pretty secure itself but on a really tough edge shake once it's lubricated up it will come out as well so to stop it coming out on the cast, you can do it a couple of ways. You can either PVA tape it, or get these little PVA stems, push that through. So you push it through with a spike end first, so push that through, and then you just literally pull it, pull it through to where you want, and then you trim it off. And you've got loads, absolute loads. It's basically a bait stop. Yeah. And then that now is absolute solid. Yeah, so that's obviously going to cast perfectly fine. So that is it. But all I do now, I've got one of them little ridge monkey uh, hanger things. Don't need them really, you can just get rid of normal locks. But what I do now, I actually hang this up like that. So the lead's obviously suspended. That's going to keep tension on. I've got rigs ready. All I've got to do is bait it up with whatever I want to bait it up with. Now, until something's happened, I don't really want to be putting any bait on, so I want to know if it takes a single, if it takes a double, or if it takes a pop-up. I want to know what's going to go. So, and I always go, ooh, rings round rod tips. Left hand rod keeps doing that a bit. and Yeah, I've, I've put some more pellet in there with uh, hemp oil around it, and since I've done that, it's... I like woke it up so there was a lot of knocks happening on that left hand rod and that is it so that's going to be my rig choice uh there's one on a bait screw so i'll just screw screw the oily straight on if i don't want, don't want the, that i'll just cut it off and then obviously i've got a ring on there aren't I? so that is it guys so that's the riggy side yeah drop that in there so we know where it is and it's just about trying to keep organised, you know, because you know it's like when you're bitting and bobbing all over the place, you put something down, you're like, 
you just lose it. So, this is my PVA box. Actually, I have everything here. In there. So, I've got all my different funnels. I've got some ready made up bags. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's one. So, we blend up here and that. And these have been tied up for probably a good part of a year. You want, make sure you go under it. Where's your babies? Yeah. And yeah, I like to just do different types. So that's that, and then I've got my PVA bag. What goes inside of this box. So the amount of PVA what I use is absolutely unreal. In here I've got all my little charts and that. So I've got bags, well, China bags, more bags, some nuggets, yeah. Loads of them, straws. More bags, different size bags. That's what these are. All different size bags, different size bags, different meshes, and then XXL bags. Yeah, so if I do decide to do something spectacular and put a, a shed load of bait out just on one spot, a big bomb like that. And then scissors in there as well, just so I can neaten and neat and things up, tidy things up, and PVA tape, and all the usual sort of PVA. So that's my PVA box, that's EVA case, that's a winch wood, witch wood, however you say it. And uh, it's spot on, yeah. These EVA cases, don't care what make it is, as long as it looks carpy, I'm good with that. Uh, jobs are good, I've got some backlights here to go on. Um, the uh, cap captive ones so these will go down there for now and uh, but that's only if I need it really I mean because I'm fishing quite close in it's quite deep in front of me I can't get the uh, waders on like but I've got enough to actually get the rod underneath each other instead of throwing one rod over there and then have a chance of knackering that position up I've got a chance to go underneath and stuff so drop all that lot over there Keep things tidy, uh, make a brew because I've eventually got my brew kit out. I was running off my work flask earlier, and that is it. But it's just a matter of case, just let's like regrin or not those on, or loop to loop, whichever way I decide to go. And uh, fish bash bosh. Yep, so fish is the left rod, bash is the middle rod, bosh is the right rod. Fish bash bosh. Like all three to go, fish bash bosh, and all go. Yep. The size of that. <laughs> it's took the peg out, hasn't it? Uh, tiny little gap here. Pushed all the nettles down on that lot. Just to get round. Yeah, so I can speak to the bailiff and whatnot when it comes. But here's the water. It's starting to die off a little bit with the wind. Um, it's not been heavy, like, but obviously it's been a bit of a chop. I'm waiting for it to go flat calm. Soon as it goes flat calm, it'll be good. But saying that, it's looking good now. Yeah, it really is. So, there we are. Oh, I've got a bit of room here, look. Major amount of room in that. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Looking good. I've not really seen any car boshing out or anything like that. I've heard things, but it's, it's mainly down here. Yeah, just um, coots and ducks shagging each other. Well, keep, keep an eye on the rods. Uh, you might see the rings. That's just obviously from the water hitting it, yeah, so if you're new to it, so I don't think it's a bite, it's just the way the water's hitting it on the rod tips. Well, that is it, all set up. One net, as always. Two nets, coffee, cradle. Yeah, I prefer cradles because, in my opinion, it's just much safer than them out. I know they're a bit more clumbers skating around and stuff, a bit more awkward. Not a bit bigger, aren't they? But you've got more control with a fish, even if it's one of the mats with the sides on it. Yeah, so like the mat cradles, they, they're still better than just a basic floor mat, what just lays on the floor, where the fish slides all over, jumps all over, and you can't bloody control the thing. Eyes, hands over its eyes and all that, like you can't control it. Well, absolutely lovely. The reason why I got it on two camera is because as soon as I actually turn round, he can't see me, so that's the reason why I'm going like that. Uh, yeah. Just waiting game, so all the pellets and boiled down here. A couple of boilers down there, two handfuls roughly. 
talking about one or two handfuls out there with one spawner pellet. Yeah, that's not far at all, that is roughly about there. Yeah, it's not halfway, about probably a quarter. Right, let's see if you can work out all the carp. And I've, I've seen them coming out. Right, so if I can get my finger, hold it still. Whoa. Where are we? So just on the tip of my finger there. Go up a bit. All across here is all dark. That's all the carp. Yeah, one's just shown there again. A few bubbles. Obviously they're not in front of me, they're obviously in front of these other two pegs. There we are, again that. See if that one comes back up again. see all the darkness over there. It's not shadows because it's moving, it's it's definitely carp. And a big body of them here as well. Middle of the light. Well, not middle of the light, but middle's where I'm. And they're coming this way slowly. Happy days. We're in. It's not a biggie. Eleven point four pound. This altered the light a little bit. There we go. Screams off. Proper out of bed and everything. Yeah, camera will do. Not quite level, but not messing around. Little oh, fish. Yeah. Left hand rod, the one that had all the pellets and all that lot. And uh look at this little fat girl in. Yeah. Yeah. Is she gonna come up? Didn't fight very much at start and then they did. And there we go. Put all this little fatty in. Yeah. Happy days. Facts of all these pallets and stuff, it's been gnawing on them until it hit the one boiling. Oh, let me get on the one more pick up this side. There we go. How can you not knock that? You can see this. Oh, I don't know. It's uh, about 10 to 10 at the minute. Um, been up since 4, 5, or something like that. More 4. Um, basically, first light sort of thing. Of, well, before it was light, actually. Um, obviously, I had that fish last night, or early hours of the morning, 2 o'clock. And uh, yeah, I've not done no filming since, apart from obviously putting it back. And uh, yeah, it's quiet again. I had a, um, another bream this morning, middle rod. It was just right and rod to go now, and then that's it, all three are done. Um, changed over onto the other systems. So not, not left rod, left rod's still, still the same, but the middle rod and the right rod has uh, changed. 
no one's over on the far bank now so what I've done I've actually launched one over there got it into the um, gully way it's basically like a bar and it goes right across but it's a bit deeper as well and uh, I've been watching the water I've been really watching the water and um, yeah there's a big black shadow over there again where, where it's a car or like slowly moving that way so I put the rest of the pellet in on this left rod I put one spot on the right rod I ain't done nothing with the middle. Uh, that's not having no, that's just for singles only. No freebies around it. And yeah, it's just quiet. So, um, young lad had one last night as well in the margins. Um, that's obviously where mine came from. But it's very quiet, I've got really no to say. Apart from just trying to get some kit. You know, to try earlier, and then someone comes setting up beside me. The oak legs. It's like, mm, I'll get up for a bit. So I'm thinking about chucking my head back down again and see. Because I, I don't think nothing's grappling in the day. Yeah, the water's got a bit more ripple on it. It's, it's not bad, but it's got a ripple. And I just can't see it happening in the day. So if it does, it does. Well, I don't think it will. I might as well rest up, ready for tonight, get something to eat and stuff. And then uh, once I filled my belly, I got bloody good sleep. Look how calm that is. That's what I've been waiting for all day. Yeah, you know, I've been watching the carp coming all the way across, all in massive packs and that like shoals, whatever you want to call them. If that don't produce some fish tonight, I will be shocked. Yeah. Perfect night for it. It has forecast rain as well. So whether it does or not, that's another thing might knock on the head if it rains but between now and one o'clock when it's meant to rain it's perfect i've just had an aggressive take on the uh, left hand rod or line i should have said not tape um hanger actually shot right up hit the alarm and then just literally dropped back down again and then a single two on the uh, middle rod again but that is spot on flat calm the tiniest little ripple well, that's mainly from that like, birds and stuffed ducks and whatnot. People probably casting in, no wind, cock on. So, one there, one there, and there. Yeah, a bit further out than where it actually looks there. It's, it's not quite halfway, it's about quarter way. That's on the PVA. Left two got changed about four o'clock, fresh baits. Rigs of self are fine. Oh yeah, they're boshing. They're boshing. Yeah, so that to me says that they're feeding. And the one just come up there. In between the ducks. So. They're playing. Yeah. So, let's have some of it. Another 2am rip-off. And that was... An absolute one toner. A couple of beeps to start with, and then it would go in. Yeah, I was racing to get my shoes and stuff on. Yeah, and uh, we got it. Yeah, it's in the retainer because it's something a bit special, and it's absolutely pissing it down as well. So it's in the retainer. So we'll see that in a little while. Um, it's a big fat chunk anyway, let's put it that way. Yeah, much bigger than the last one. So, we'll do everything tomorrow. It's just been on up to stuff on it. And then uh, in the retainer, securely on the cord, on the uh, little netting thing, what I've got to put my nets on. So it can't go anywhere. Jobs are good in there. But I thought I lost it at one point. Um, it got underneath this right hand bush. And it went dead. It's like, no. It's done me. So I just kept I just kept pulling. Yeah, that's all I could do, keep pulling. And, uh, and then I felt a knock knock. It's like, yes, it's still on. And then it come out. And it won't go in back in there again. There must be a big branch quite low down in there. So 
So happy days. And that was on the uh, Fox system. So that is now all three rods done. Fish, bash, bosh. It's a lovely fish. I wanted another one and it's done it in style. Uh, any more now it's just well it's always a bonus but any more now it's a bonus I'm, I'm, I'm happy now I can go home <laughs> see you in the morning proper morning <sighs> oh yes she's feisty Right, so a bit fun. still I ain't gonna get her picked up on it. the number now. This ain't going to be easy. It's obviously been in the sack since about quarter past two in the morning because it was a 15 minute battle. Let's turn you, mother. That's it. Imagine this on a mat. I'm trying to lift up for the camera purpose. No, 
on this side. Up here though, so. Well, as you can probably tell from behind me, most of the gear is down, so the bivvy's down. Bed's on there. Yep. Yeah. Walk back here. Turn around. That's all I've got left. I'm just having a brew and then I'm basically going to call it. It's um, maybe about eight-ish, something like that. So, oh, that's like that. I can't see no happening to be fair, but I'll have a brew, give it a chance. Yeah, but my weekend's been made. Pigeons? Yeah. My weekend's been made. Um, nice little common, and then uh, a nice juicy mirror. And then however many brew it were, I don't know, I won't even count in them things. But yeah, the wind's picked up, and uh, I suppose I want to get home, get everything dried out now. With the rain last night, that. That mirror was just literally just before the rain and then it started hammering, well not hammering it down, it started getting faster obviously as I was playing it. And uh, I'll show you what it went into. So, right, I'll show you here. That is a fallen tree and it goes out. I didn't know it was a fallen tree until this morning. And it went under that. So, but we got her out, didn't we? Yeah. Worst case scenario, I've got the uh, waders. It's only shallow, I could have got in there anyway. I don't know where it steps off to there, like, but I can see around here, so I could have got in with the waders anyway. Worst case scenario. Never come to that. Yeah. So, I'm going to be wrapping up, uh, unless something else happens, which I don't think it will, to be fair, because obviously how the weather is and that, like, it's just, it doesn't look right, yeah. It's a lovely day, but the wind's uh, chops on the water. They don't like it. Yeah, unless I get more brain. But I ain't putting them on the camera anyway. I'm a carp fisherman, not a bream fisherman. Loads of little fry down here. Shed loads of them. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be probably it for the video. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the sub. And, uh, I'll uh, do some more. So, all going well. Hoping for like once a month at the minute, like with work and everything. It's once a month ideally. So, all right. See you later. Comments below.